Good evening, beautiful Lovatarians. This is Natalia PH, and I am a Lovatarian. And this is the Lovatarian Way Show. I don't know if you have just found this space, if I have seen you before. I would definitely like to ask anyone who is here to say hello, say where you're from, and I will be welcoming you. And I would love, love, love that this show is interactive. OK, so we can play, we can have fun, we can ascend higher and higher, co-creating heaven on earth realities and truly experiencing our best life. The purpose of this show is to actually guide you into your true self. So who is Natalia? If you don't know me, you know, I I remembered basically I remembered what my true nature is, and that is. A lovetarian nature, basically, as simple as that. I remembered myself during very deep trances as light and love being. And that love and light being has come here to incarnate as that, okay, this specimen of a woman. And it's going to guide and mentor and coach anybody who is willing to listen, okay? So Richard found me a while ago somewhere on Facebook and he saw my podcast, the Love Eternal Way podcast, and something in it struck him as interesting. And he invited me to have a show here. If you are for the first time here, I would love to encourage you to watch five previous episodes where I had guests, actually, and we talked about a variety of Lovetarian topics. But what has happened since? Last show was two weeks ago. I went deeper and deeper and deeper connecting with my higher self. And what happened, I received so many insights and downloads that it is time for me to take the center stage. It is time for me to share the message of my heart, of my higher self, and truly just choose to be by myself and guide those who want to be guided and have fun, really have fun and not to get, um, not to confuse anyone with other messages. This is the Lovetarian Way show and I'm told by my guides and by my higher self to talk to you about that. If you would like to enjoy other guests that I had, please watch the other shows and I have 40 episodes of beautiful conversations with people on my YouTube channel as well, The Lovetarian Way. So abundance is available there for you to enjoy other people as well. And occasionally when I receive my marching orders from my higher self, I will absolutely invite people again. For now, this is what needs to happen so I can live my most authentic life and really guide those who would like to be guided because i would love for you to interact with me ask your com ask your questions and comments and we're gonna have fun we're gonna definitely have fun i asked richard to show some pictures not yet first of all i need to say a few more things because if you're here for the first time you probably don't know much about the lovetarian way so what it is it is a consciousness it is a consciousness that is birthing through me so i happen to be a channel that this consciousness wanted to come through. And I remembered from my previous lifetimes, I have been a guide, priestess, I have been a coach, mentor. This is my journey of many lifetimes. And in this lifetime, about 13 years ago, 2009, I believe, I received a vision that was really deep and I was very unawakened, okay? What does that mean? I had no idea I was a spiritual being having a human experience. I was just a girl, a businesswoman, a wife, you know, just enjoying my life. But, but occasionally those insights were coming. I remember when I was three years old, I saw myself observing my little body from above. And then I remember asking, who is this thing? Who is this thing that I'm observing? And there was this split in a way of consciousness that I was the presence, the I that was observing, and there was the it, the little baby. So there were the little glimpses already then when I felt there's more to just bodysuit, if you will. And then later, you know, when my favorite grandpa passed on when I was 12 years old, 
again, I had no idea about spirituality, nothing like that about our quantum nature. He came to see me and he came to say that he loves me in spirit, by the way, okay, at night. And I knew, I knew that my favorite grandpa was gone, that he passed on, not gone. He was not gone. He moved on to another chapter of his existence as spirit. And in the morning, my parents came to announce his death into my room they came and said you know something happened and I told them I know what happened because grandpa already visited me and I was 12 years old so that was that but then over you know my adulthood and my 20s my 30s I didn't want that I didn't want any of this I wanted to just live my life I wanted to be successful in my business I wanted to study I wanted to travel the world I wanted to be a human with all that it entails and being just a human well, I managed to create a lot of beauty and also managed to create a lot of poo-poo, as I call it. I had 25 years of eating disorder, I near financial ruin, I had cancer diagnosis, all those things that later, as I went on, I understood they happened for me so that I can have those human experiences and I can share the lessons that I've learned, all the insights that I have received during those experiences, so I can share those with the world. So about 13 years ago then, I started to mentor and I started to coach. So I totally shifted my career from being a business person, being you know focused on making money and being successful, all this spiel, you know, the sub, sub, we could call it superficial, materialistic, it's not a judgment. I'm just making a distinction here, okay? Because I love money and money loves me. Money is just a form of energy. I look at life from energetic perspective. So life just is, okay? Life just is. It's not good. It's not bad. It just flows. And life is God. Life is mother, father, creatrix, creator, whatever you want to call it. Life, li life is love and life is... Is light, you know, energy vibrating as its own frequency. And so it happens that I have, I am choosing over and over again to align with the highest frequency of my existence as this being. I choose to align with Lovitarian way. That is very high consciousness. That is source consciousness. That is very, very highly vibrational consciousness where I choose to embody love. And I'm not kidding you right now. Like every single day I wake up, I'm looking in the mirror and I see love and I see another human and I see love. And is it easy? Here's the thing. You see those dragons behind me? I'm a dragon lady. I was born in a dragon, year of a fiery dragon, 1976. I am born as an Aries. I am very passionate. I am very temperamental as a human. OMG. And so to choose to, to be love, every single day to have compassion for other humans even if i my, my ego might think they are idiots i'll say it it's not a judgment again you know it's a reality that is perceived by my ego mind sometimes but my soul my heart my higher self wants me to live as lovitarian, loving unconditionally. And I've been receiving those visions more and more and more and more. And that's why I'm right now in front of a camera saying hello to you. And I hope there is an audience here. <laughs> I don't know, Richard, if we have anybody yet that I can say hello to. Could I, yeah, could I say a few hellos before I go on? Because, you know, guys and girls, beautiful people, I can just go on. I even had to make notes because my higher self, I'm writing a book. It has been giving me so much that I had to make notes. Otherwise, I would basically just went on a rant. <laughs> so who have we got? Uh, Audrey from Ireland. Hello, Audrey. I'm in Spain and I'm Polish, you know. My husband is Swedish, so very multi multinational. Richard, Natalia, Alison, this is from Joanne. I recognize you. Hello. It is so lovely to have you back. Lacey from USA, Delaware. How fantastic. I love America. I have Texan friends coming to visit soon. Nadia. Hello, Nadia. Nice to see you here. Who else? Tara Angels. What a beautiful name. Hello and welcome. Who else? Regan. Oh, from Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. Oh my God, I love Australia. I have lots of Australian clients. Lovely to meet you, Reagan. How nice. Toledo, Meredith, hello. Nice to meet you. So nice to have such international crowd. Martina, hello, Martina. Are you maybe Dutch? Reese, hello, hello. 
Reese is it the first name is Re yes Reese nice name hello nice dude we have a guy <laughs> are there any more guys oh hello Rebecca Rebecca where are you from who else have we got Margaret from Glasgow nice to see you here I love the doggy what is the name of the doggy Nadia from Belgium all right I used to study in Belgium and in Holland so I love this area as well Yvonne hello beautiful nice to have you here Carrie Ann oh babe I'm not doing channelings but thank you for your question but I will please stick stick with this show because there will be a lot of valuable information for you and your daughter and everyone Pat Brown New Jersey hello and what did you say Richard Sam hello Pat, hello. Natalie, my namesake. Hi, hi. Sue, hi there. Jill, hello. Corey, hello and welcome. Kavita, okay, perfect. So shall we play? Let's play. Okay, welcome everyone. And I'm going to be playing with you. I will need to refer to my notes because there's just so much and I want to have some sort of order. Otherwise, it's going to be like, woohoo, you know, rodeo. Who? What did you say? Oh, the dog. Oh, you know what? Then it's in heaven with my dog, leader. My dog went to heaven in March, Labrador, 15 years it's been with us, like a fairy kid. So I'm sure they are playing. That's my belief that they are playing together in, in heaven and we'll see them again. That's what I believe. All right. So I was talking to you about the Lovitarian way, right? And how can the topic today is embrace self-love so that you can live the most authentic life. And I mentioned to you that I choose every single day to love, okay? That is a choice. That is a choice that we need to make if we want to be in the flow of life. If we want to go against the flow, that's fine too. There is absolutely no judgment whatsoever. It's just going to be a life that is filled with suffering. Remember what Buddha said, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. And it truly is optional if we make a choice to align with the music of our own heart. So I am here to guide, okay, but I am not here to tell you what to do. My intention is that my higher self, the music of my higher self will connect with the music of your higher self, your heart, and we will align and we'll start vibrating at the same frequency and you will open your eyes you will open your ears and you will start experiencing more of who you truly are and that can happen very easily if you let it however it will not happen and it's flat out okay from my own life experiences and from mentoring clients for the last 13 years it's not going to happen if you're going to say no <laughs> no because you were given a gift me, you, all of us. We were given a gift on the moment we have chosen to incarnate. We are given a gift of free will. And our free will is very powerful. I mean, you know, if you say no, you, your thoughts will be in opposition. Your feelings will join it and it will be a big no. The belief system that you will start creating basically will make it impossible. Henry Ford said, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're right. And it is absolutely so that we live our life based on our belief systems. And those belief systems have been imprint imprinted and programmed into us by the age of seven years old. You know, Jesuit priests, they said, give me a boy and I will give you a man. Okay. So, so they actually took young boys and they put certain thoughts and belief systems into them to create soldiers right to create soldiers to send them to war in the name of god and this is just a little example what happens to us and science neuroscience shows us now without a doubt that our subconscious mind which actually runs the show 95 percent of our life is run by subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is programmed by the age of seven years old 
by people most of the time who are completely unconscious, completely unaware, have no idea how to live conscious, lovitarian, authentic life that is based on the guidance of the wisest, most beautiful, most powerful, infinite part of yourself, which is your higher self, okay? Most of us, up until the moment when we awaken, most of us will just live on default, ran by those programs. Liken it to a computer, okay? Every computer, imagine yourself as a computer. When you, when for you to function at its best, you need a great software. If your software is doo-doo, that's what you're going to be creating, right? So I'm going to be giving you some guidance, some tools, how we could live the most authentic life in guidance, with guidance, in alignment, okay, with our higher self. So I'm going to play a little bit here with you. I will ask Richard to show you something, but not yet in order to illustrate something. I wanted to illustrate the power of belief system. And it is very, very important. So Richard, if you would like to show first picture, I will play with everyone. Please interact with me and put in comments what you see. Could you tell me what you see on this picture? Could you put it in comments so I can see what you see? Please play with me here. Tell me what you see. I am not seeing any comments yet. Are there any, Richard? Okay, great. So I will be showing you some pictures and I would like you to put in comments what it is that you are seeing. There will be three pictures. Yes, Richard? That's what you are, uh, that's what people are saying, yeah? Okay. Great, and then the next picture. So what do you see on this one? Come on, peeps. Anybody seeing something? Okay, so I'm gonna, yeah, okay, I'm gonna be singing. So in a moment, you will start seeing another picture and you really want to take a breath, focus, maybe take some perspective and tell me what you're seeing. And we're going to play a little bit. While you are answering what you're seeing, why don't I also... Okay, yes, that's right, that's right. Okay, and then there's a third one coming. So let's see what you are going to see there. Right, and then there's a third picture. Now that one is an interesting one. See if anybody can see anything. <laughs> I've got some funny, funny, funny business with this picture. There is a lot of beings on that one. So let's see what where your imagination will take you. What this is illustrating is basically how your mind is focusing and it will also be showing you different things you will be perceiving one thing and another person will be perceiving another thing so my question to you is in terms of creating your own reality and focusing your thoughts your feelings your emotions and how belief systems get created there is one picture right so Cat, cow, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, now we can take off the pictures. So what this little exercise is illustrating is that there is a picture, okay? And some people are seeing a cow. Some people are seeing cat. Some people are seeing rabbits where there is also a bird. One person is seeing a young woman. Another person is seeing an old woman. So now I'll ask you, how is that possible? Anybody has any ideas how that is possible? Or do you not ask yourself a question how it is even conceivable that this person sees a young woman and that person sees an old woman or that person is seeing rabbit and that person is seeing a bird? You see? I don't know if you heard me.
What did you say? We seem to have technical problems. Now am I back? I'm back. Okay, so I keep talking. Yes, I'm, I'm loving the, the comments that I'm getting about the animals. So I talked to you about the story of Columbus. So Columbus, when he got to the shores of the new, new land, you know, nobody was able to see the ships. Can you believe it? Can you believe that people were not able to see the ships? One person did, a shaman did see the ships. And then shaman told the people what he saw in the language that people understood. And then they focused and they saw ships too. How is that possible? How is it possible that they saw the ships after? Were the ships not there? Or were they? Is the rabbit on the picture or is it a bird? Is it a young woman or is it an old woman? This is the software that I'm talking about in the computer of your being. Depending on how you've been programmed, depending on what belief systems you have adopted during your lifetime, you will be seeing different things. And all those things, no matter what you are seeing or the other person is seeing, all of those options, all of those infinite possibilities, they exist. So what does this illustrate? Well, very powerful thing, really. Perception, thank you, Reese. Perception and also focus, right? So when I tell you every morning I wake up and I say to myself, I choose to be a lovetarian. I choose to embody unconditional love. I choose to live my authentic self. The one that is heart based. Because I could choose, we are multidimensional being. The way I'm receiving it, we are multidimensional being. We are mind, we are body, we are heart, so emotions, right? We have many different layers of energy. The way I perceive the being, it is an energy being. Everything is a form of energy. This microphone, my body, your body, my thoughts, my feelings, emotions, everything is energy vibrating at its own frequency. And then if I choose, Okay, if I choose in the morning to wake up and say to myself, I'm going to be love, I'm going to be grateful, I'm going to feel amazing, and I'm going to speak it, and I'm going to think it, and I'm going to feel it, I'm going to do what? I'm going to put myself in an incredible vibrational high. And when I do that, since everything is energy, everything, okay, Richard is energy, this microphone is energy, you are energy. If I'm at a high energy and I want the beautiful life that is also high energy because heaven on earth, beauty, cooperation, fabulous experiences, they are very high energy. Richard, you could actually show the picture where I shared with you the vibrational scale, which actually is picture number last, I think. Do you hear me? because I kind of skipped the order here. The one that is vibrational scale, do you, do you see it like scales, vibrating scales? Don't know that, yeah. It's like two, two little uh, vortexes, huh? So look at this picture, I'm gonna, answer questions in a second. I just want to take it a little bit farther. Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning, right, you can see here, this is a great illustration of what happens when you wake up in the morning and you choose to focus on love. The upward spiral that takes you up. And what I mean by taking you up, well, your higher self, 
my dear, is vibrating very high, right? Your lower self, which we can call also ego, <laughs> no judgment. Again, as I said, life just is, friends. Life just is. And it's up to you to choose consciously as an adult, regardless what programming, what software you have achieved, you have received when you were a kid. It doesn't matter. You are an adult person now and you have a gift of free will and you can make aware and conscious choices every single day. So you wake up in the morning and you say, okay, I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to forget yesterday's BS. I'm going to forget about somebody did something to me. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go because if I do, you're going to feel great. And when you feel great and you embrace those feelings that you can see here on the upward scale, everything deriving from love, joy, appreciation, beauty, goodness, hope, optimism, all this you're going to feel great and you're going to do what? You're going to start to experience. Some people call it attract, okay? But I don't call it necessarily love attraction anymore because why? Everything is energy that vibrates at its own frequency and your true nature is high love, light, abundance, beauty. So can you attract that which you are? Well, I would say you can manifest it, right? But you don't necessarily attract it because you just manifest it, you know? So it's like you are that I am that I am. And you are waking up in the morning and you say, I am joy. I am love. I am heaven on earth. And I shall declare this to be my life. The Lovetarian way is my life. And you will then start creating, creating and experiencing more of those experiencing as experiences. And the opposite is exactly true. When you wake up in the morning and you will get motivated by the emotion of fear, which by the way, by the way, it is not your true nature. Your ego is a mental construct, okay? This is a mental construct that kind of took over society, humanity over eons of time and it started to run the show. But the way I received, the way we were created, we were created to be in bliss, to have everything that we need. And if you don't believe it, look around at nature. I mean, seasons are changing without your participation. Birds are flying, you know, the, 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 the flowers are blooming. Nobody needs your participation. Yes, we can go into artificial manipulation of crops and all of that, but this is not the show. We're talking about the nature that I have received in my visions. I have not received, I remembered, okay? I, I remembered it. I've been there, I am here, and I experienced this over the last 13 years when I really, truly chose to live the libertarian way. It just is. So I am told by my higher self that abundance, joy, love, light this is who we are this is who we are and everything but that which is based on fear and all those emotions that's doo-doo that's illusion that's an illusion and you know if you choose to believe that it is true that illusion you will then see what what does not exist but you will make it into reality so if you if we would liken to those examples if if a rabbit is heaven and um, the other one the the bird is hell you choose what do you want to see right do you want to see a rabbit do you want to see the bird it all depends on your focus and it all depends on your perception so i think now you're feeling me what I'm saying, right? Like it is really wise, it is really smart to make choices, conscious choices with real, you know, heart-based consciousness to, to create your heaven on earth. And then you will know, you will start more and more, you will start to receive little prompts from your heart. If you let it speak to you more and more because yeah, as I said, ego took over, mad ego took over society, humanity, and it's been going on for thousands of years. So it's strong. It's not bad. Okay. It's not bad. It's just wants to live, you know, like everything in the world is energy vibrating at its frequency and ego mind also wants to live. And every being in the world wants to be loved, even if they don't know that they want to be loved. 
that is what they want. And why do they want it? Because that is their true nature. Why do I know that? Oh man, like millions of examples, but we don't have the time for millions of examples. Before I go on further and I ask Richard to show some more pictures for some more tools to empower you, let me see if we have some questions because I'm like on the roll here and I'm not looking at comments. Uh, Regina, what about, yeah, what about the third photo? Because I saw a man standing his head in the, well, well, there you go. You saw what you saw, Re Re Reagan. And I'm not going to be saying anything about that, but you saw what you saw. And that's your right to see what you see. That's what you chose. That's what you chose to see through your subconscious programming. Because, you know, you might say to yourself consciously, how the hell, right? We could go deep into it and have a one-on-one -on -one session, but that's not going to happen now. My point that I was illustrating here is that we will see what we will see, and that's perfectly all right. And all those outcomes exist because everything is fluid. You know, this energy field that we perceive in this body through our five senses, depending on what kind of software we have, we will see different things. And the fact that you are seeing this and that person is seeing that, it's not bad, it's not good, it's just simply what it is. And actually, it would be perfect time to bring the stages of awareness photo, Richard, which I believe was next, was number four, I think. <laughs> let's see. Yes. So let me get to my notes. Yes, here it is. Exactly. So those stages of awareness, what are they illustrating further? They are allowing, this is again channeled, um, I don't know, two years ago, I believe I received it. I don't even know. It's like time and space for me. It's like, I just go with the flow now. So those stages of awareness as I downloaded them uh, from the field, <laughs> they basically allow us to understand ourselves the journey, this quantum inner journey on the Levitarian way, because, you know, one day I might be a Levitarian and the next day I might feel like a beard from hell. And that's fine too, you know, it's this experience as a human being is very interesting because we are beings, we are dual beings, you know, to keep the balance, to, to, to maintain this existence. We are light and we are darkness. And we can have an existence depending on whatever we're going to choose. If you're going to want to create heaven on earth, which I am choosing, you will need to perpetuate and cultivate more of light, more of love in your life, everyday life. But if you want to experience hell on earth, well, that is a choice too. And there's no judgment. It's just going to be a lot of suffering. I have chosen to transcend all suffering. And that is my guidance for everyone to transcend all suffering. So to do that, I have downloaded those stages to help you understand your own stages better and maybe those that you care about people around you because you know it's it's cool that you know the world is the way it is right we we still don't have in this what i call 3d reality the world of duality we still experience well poverty war materialistic approach to everything we are not just walking here om om now Namaste every single day, right? It's not exactly everybody's reality. It is my reality most of the time already. However, not always. Even yesterday, I had a little freak out. And then I forgave myself. And I, once again, transcended, ascended. I went higher and everything was fine. So every single day, we need to make that choice. Even every single moment of every day, we need to consciously look at our life and say, do I like my life now? No, I don't like it. Oops, then I need to come back to the basic. I need to breathe, recalibrate, and maybe bring some of those tools that Natalia is talking about into my consciousness. And this is this little ex explanation here will help you forgive yourself, love yourself, forgive others, for they know not what they do, as Jesus said, because they can't possibly see that rabbit if they are seeing the, the bird. You know what I'm saying? Their software is working like that for the moment. And they need to become conscious, present, take deep breaths to see what you see. However, your job is not to tell them what they need to see. My job is not to tell you you need to see that. No, my job is just to embody this consciousness and be what's called a way shower. I'm just going to 
to my blah blah you know and if you resonate awesome if you don't i love you anyway right that's just as simple as that so those stages the basic stage of awareness this programming if you will uh, or rather remembering who we are as we go through this awakening process when you are understanding more and more well i'm not just just this body okay i'm awakening to this consciousness to this infinite being that i am to this beautiful higher self of mine to holy spirit to god creator creatrix source consciousness that i am my i am presence i'm awakening so it happens in stages and the stages by the way are not linear they are not linear and you will also experience like a little bit of a mish, mission mash and spiral because in one area of your life, for example, with your family, you might be a total angel and you will be in the third stage, as I call it, and you will be like, oh, I'm all one and I love everyone. And it's awesome. But when you go to work, you're going to get like ah, and you are already out of this third stage. You are like on that scale, emotional scale, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down and recalibrating, right? The best way to recalibrate is just to stop, get conscious, take a breath and ask yourself, do I want to suffer anymore? Or do I want to create my heaven on earth? Because baby, you are in charge, okay? Nobody, not your husband, not your boss, not your kid, you. Simple as that. So in this zero stage of awareness, when you are so-called unawakened human, you experience duality. So you perceive reality as this is me, this is that person, okay? There's a separation. There's a separation and you think that this is your body, their body is their body, there's duality. You don't think about the world as energy vibrating at its own frequency you don't think that you are energy being having a human experience you don't think you're quantum energy no no you just think this is me i have my leg i have my hand i have my head and that's me and they have theirs okay so that's like you sleepy you sleepy baby and that's perfectly fine what happens to most of us who are awakening well humans are doom doom i mean i'm gonna just say like I've been told that humanity is experimentation and free will because, you know, we, we are born and we've got it all. We've got abundance. We've got beauty. We've got love. We've got peace. We've got co cooperation. We've got everything. And then we forget it. And then we are being programmed, right, by the age of seven. And we are by, being programmed by people who just don't know better. Our parents, school system, government, whatever, they just don't know any better. So how can we blame anybody? We can't blame anybody because they just don't know. If they knew, maybe they would do better. If they don't know, they don't, okay? So you need to get over yourself and stop blaming anybody because it's not a blame game. It's just the nature of this reality. And here's the thing, as this beautiful spiritual energy that you came and chose your body, as Reagan, as Joanna, as Natalia, as Richard, have chosen to incarnate in this lifetime okay and you're gonna have a journey and you're gonna have a ride of remembrance you will take those layers of the onion of programming off one by one one by one one by one from this lifetime from other lifetimes and you'll start to remember more and more as you are ascending as your higher self is calling you as your heart is calling you you feel like maybe your life is not going the way you want to something it happens like for me you know typical like 10, 25 years of eating disorder do you know how how unpleasant that is to have your head over the toilet for 25 years throwing up everything that you had eaten not cool <laughs> not judging myself i know i have done it for myself nobody has done it to me doesn't matter what pain i had gone through what had caused it in this lifetime this was merely a little trigger, a reminder for me to go through this. So I've suffered so much. I basically made myself sick to the point where I just had the flash of consciousness. The light came through and I looked at myself again over that toilet and was like, what the F are you doing? And it didn't change. What do you think that when I saw that I changed immediately? No, I saw that the behavior was not beneficial for me to experience my heaven on earth because I was in hell. I was in hell. But then it started, the light started to become more and more evident. My heart started to talk to me more and more and more. I was no longer 
living in a cage of my thoughts because I realized that all the fear that I was feeling, all the anxiety that I was feeling, all the sense of belonging, all the desire to get approval from others, all the issues that I was experiencing, all this stuff was just BS and nonsense and an illusion that I am actually a beautiful energy being that is powerful beyond measure. And I forgot and I forgot. And funny enough, you know, this life is really quite a circus. The way I see it, it's like we're coming as a spiritual being, having this experience, and we create scenarios for ourselves to have and play as humans. Okay. We we're creating all sorts of scenarios. One of those scenarios was for me to have this eating disorder, whatever the label is in this reality. While in fact, all that it was, was me not loving myself, not remembering my true nature, not remembering that I don't need to fulfill anybody's expectation of my life. I don't need to, I don't need to do anything that my soul and my heart doesn't really want to. But yet I did. And why did I? Because by the age of seven years old, I was programmed and conditioned certain way. And that's cool. That's cool. You know, that's perfectly fine. It's not a problem. It's an evolutionary journey of growth. And I had to suffer so much that I had to awaken to that, to that understanding. You know, it's a, and here's the thing, you know, I went to seven psychologists. I went to different people. Nobody was able to help me because why? Because I didn't let it. I wasn't ready to heal. So if you beautiful people are going through something right now, understand this. You are going through this because at some very, very deep level of your existence, you have the need to suffer. And that is perfectly okay. The moment you suffered enough, you will awaken and you will stop and you will start changing. And you will enter into the second, first stage, because now we're talking about zero stage, right? First stage is empowered human. Empowered human is this person that starts to get those inklings, get those inklings that some there's more to it, that your mind is actually creative, that you can, you have a sense of control over your behavior, over your thoughts, over your feelings. You start to become aware, your higher self there's like a little bit of a split or you experience it like a split. You start perceiving yourself as your body then there's your mind then there's something else. So there are multidimensional layers to you. You quite, you can't quite yet put a finger on it. However, you start to recognize that there's more that meets the eye, so to speak. Right. And in that stage, I, um, I was, you know, for a very long time and, my ego was really bossy at that stage because then you, I, I got this sense of power. Like, yeah, I noticed that if I think this way, I get this. If I think that way, I get that. And it makes me feel like that. And I start acting a certain way, you know, exactly, Joanne, people pleasing and all of that. Exactly. You know, so I started to notice in that stage as I was getting more and more empowered that there is more to it, that I have some power I can change. Okay, and this was exciting to me. I started to believe, I, I started to research about this law of attraction, right? About all those incredible things that if I use my mind, my imagination, I start to sorry, attract. But that's just stage one, okay? As I went deeper and deeper into it, what started to happen, I started to awaken more and more because I allowed more of myself to speak through this body, okay? I started to allow more light, more love to speak through me, more empowering energies. I was, if you will, increasing on this vibrational scale more and more. And in essence, what happened, when we as humans choose to lift ourselves up emotionally, we, we are vibrating in a higher stage of awareness. Our higher self is coming to meet us like somewhere in the middle and it starts talking and start to empower us more and more and more. You start to be more open. Rhonda, just keep tuning in. Chica, you will get some empowerment here for sure. I would encourage people to rewatch it again and take some notes because now it's not the best time to be taking notes, but there's a lot of good stuff here for notes taking later on. But now I just want you to listen and tune in and ask your questions if you will. 
So this is what happens when you're starting to get empowered. And then on the second stage, you're becoming really awakening human and you start to experience oneness with all beings. You start to live more as an energy being and you start to love yourself more. Yeah, so now we're coming to love, right? Your mind starts to soften and you start to tune into more into the music of your heart more and more and more because you started you started to notice that you can actually control your thoughts and you started to notice that how you think and how you feel puts you in a certain state of being and when you're in that state you have such life and when you're in the other state based on fear you are experiencing life differently right you see so you getting more and more you know, like it's more tangible. It's more tangible to you. So it becomes more of a heart-based existence. And then when you do it long enough, for most people, I'm sorry to say it's years. For me, it's been 13 years. And only, I must say, two years ago, I received truly the final vision, final, no, not final, the latest vision of the Levitarian way, where I, most of the days, most of the time, embody unconditional love when I'm becoming this divine human right so i am bombs can be exploding i might be actually i experienced that yesterday i was in the hospital with my husband you know busy emergency room like crazy and there we are just waiting our turn meditating and going oh um, um, um. so this was quite hilarious for people in the waiting room yet they were curious like what do these people know why are they not fretting and stressing and whatever and we were just chilled and knowing that what had happened happened for us everything is fine what had happened actually my husband slipped and managed to uh, tear his meniscus in his knee so now he's jumping on his crutches and you know what how do you take an experience like this and you say this is happening for me well i'll tell you he made a promise to himself that within three years he's going to climb Mount Everest. Okay. And by the way, my husband is not exactly a fitness king. Okay. He doesn't even like to work out, but this is the goal. This is, is going to be a great way to spend my birthday. And I said, okay, I'll join at least to camp the, the first base, whatever it's called. Right. So he decided then to train because three years from now he's going to do it. So he decided to train. And funny enough, when he started his training, he was actually setting a camera to record himself, how he's doing the exercises for the good form and everything. Before he even started, boom, crack, he heard doing the squat and meniscus went and got torn. So <laughs> how do you then reconcile that, right? How so he do he's doing the work as well with me. He's ascending, he's awakening, he's remembering his nature. So then he had to take responsibility and said, okay, wow, why this that this why this this happened? What is the message here? How is this for me? And then we know, we know that you have planned this life for yourself. Every experience is happening for you. You choose to focus on the good, you choose to focus on the light. So if this happened, this means something. And there's an empowering message. His knees. So the problem was the knee. Knee in this energetic system that is our body. The knees represent fear of moving forward. There is still some anxiety and there is still something that he was afraid of deeply. And I would say if you make a plan like that in three years to, to go and hike, you know, Mount Everest and you are like in shape you know <clears throat> no comments there there's work to be done so of course you know he made this decision there was a lot of anxiety duality stress still so he gave himself a present and he jeopardized that for himself so he can maybe reevaluate maybe he needs to go deeper maybe he needs to prepare he needs to take it seriously already now if he wants to achieve that goal because he was kind of like yeah i'm just gonna do this program uh, this and that well i'm sorry people but mount everest it's kind of a work right so that was just an example now Coming back to you, let's see if we have some comments before I go on. Having trouble with self-love, that, yeah, Rhonda, just keep listening. Richard, are there any questions more? Is anybody commenting, saying anything before I go on? Perfect. 
What did you say? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, cool. Could I could I have the the slide with the algorithm of co-creation? That's the other blue blue one. What is this algorithm of co-creation and how does it how does it fit into all of this? Let's oh yeah, I'm seeing this. So okay. I just told you about the stages of awareness, right? And that's first stage of awareness when you are empowered human. As I said, you are starting to get a hang of this idea that you can control your thoughts, right? That you are so powerful. There's this law of attraction. You can visualize something, you can focus on it and it will come to you, okay? So when I was in that stage, I downloaded from my higher self this formula called algorithm of creation. Mind you, this is algorithm of co-creation, but first it was called many years ago. It was called algorithm of creation because I thought how funny and how naively of me all good that it's only me my mind i am so powerful right i'm going to focus i'm going to meditate i'm going to visualize and it's all going to come to me so talking about some strong bossy ego right okay well i had something else coming i have manifested a lot of things i have created a beautiful life and then boom shit hits the fan <laughs> and then i'm like how the huh how did i attract that how did i do this how is this how is this, this is impossible i've been so positive right <laughs> well here is the thing when this happened i had to look a little bit i had to take a step back a little bit i'm like something is missing in this equation because i've been so positive and i've been so good right i've been doing my exercises and now i have this huge problem what is this and then i got further downloads I was like, hello, little girl. That's my higher self speaking to me. You know, life is more than the mind and life is more than control. Life is about co-creating with your higher self, with this powerful, beautiful, infinite part of yourself that dwells in your heart, dreams its dreams through your heart, and it actually knows exactly what heaven on earth is for you. So it's not for your little mind to decide what heaven on earth is for you. All the beautiful cars, beautiful houses, beautiful whatever materialistic things you want to have. It's not about that. Although there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I love those things too. However, life is about experiencing this beautiful bliss, this beautiful communion with your higher self this beautiful co-creation with other humans this heaven on earth reality where people are loving where people are cooperating where people are living in harmony when people are well i'm gonna just say it beautiful beautiful and i don't mean physically i mean emotionally mentally there is harmony there is no war there's no poverty there's no distraction there is no jealousy there's no competition none of this nonsense all those things are constructs of the ego the ego that went cuckoo okay eons 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 ago because well everything is energy you know and ego is an energy form and ego was actually given to us as i understand it to motivate us to have to as jill said in in the show um which we did i believe it was a second or third show to bring unknown into known you know to to manifest all those beautiful things that you want to have but not to get lost in those things and that's what happened over the years over the ages people got lost in the materialism people got lost in those things okay and they forgot they got so mad that they started to completely forget their hearts they completely forgot the joy of living they completely forgot this beauty and they started to go against everyone right and they started to believe that there is not enough for everyone they started to believe that they must compete their resources are not infinite they thought that you know 
they are them. They, they just drop to the zero stage of awareness. They thought that this person is that person, that person is that person, and then they are Muslim, they are, you know, Catholics, they are that, and, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. How it went there, I'm not going to go there because this is not the show. The show is about remembering, empowering nature of ourselves, and that is the Lovatarian. Being a Lovatarian, right? Love and light and heaven on earth. That is the purpose here. All the other stuff, it's just out there and it's not for us to focus. We are focusing on what we want to experience. So, oh, hold on here because Wendy says she also has bad knees and really don't want to walk. Yeah, right, Wendy. Isn't it interesting? You know, I will recommend to everyone right now, classic, classic in this field, um, You Can Heal Your Life by Louisa Hay. And also Karen Truman, I believe, is the author Feelings buried alive never die. Those two books are the bomb. They are going to really guide you and show you if you have any issues in your body, in whichever part of your body, you will be able to find in that book what it means and also how to rewrite it, how to speak that which you wish to become, how to heal that part of yourself. It's a beautiful, those are beautiful books, right? So Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life, classic. Now, I mean, it's like decades ago. And Karen Truman, Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. So, yes. Now I'm going to go back to the algorithm because I think I flow away. You know what? It's funny, right? I have all those notes. And do you think I'm using them? No. I just love going with the flow. There has to be some order out of this chaos, right? So I can guide you a little bit more structurally. Okay, so uh, Richard, do I have that algorithm somewhere there, please? Now again, so I can give you this last tool because I think how much time we've got. Oh, gee, one hour already. Okay, so let's give you this one tool. And you know what, beautiful peeps, let this be episode one of this actual topic, which is embrace self-love, right? And live authentically. The next episode in two weeks will be part two because I have merely just touch a little bit of what is coming through. So the algorithm of co-creation, I'm going to leave you What? The, yes, here, there we go. Yeah, I'm going to leave you with this and I'm going to go deep into this. So when you're entering the next stage, right, the stage, second stage of awakening human, and you're starting to truly feel and understand that you're co-creating, co-creating, not just creating by your ego, you're co-creating with your heart, which in my belief is the seed of our higher self it's the place where you anchor your higher self your higher self is infinite it's huge it's powerful there's no limit it's everything and everywhere and so is other people's higher selves and this is all connected in this quantum field beautiful quantum field of god mother creatrix whatever you want to call it uh, source universe right all this is connected. Our higher selves are connected. We are all connected. And when you are start to when you start to align with your beautiful heart, with your higher self, when you start to listen, when you start to hear, when you start to respond and co-create, you will then uh, manifest in your life beautiful people who are in the same vibration and who are actually co-creating heaven on earth. Like Richard found me, he thinks he's probably not a lovetarian. I don't know. I'm making assumptions here. <laughs> but he found me and here we are, right? I didn't go looking. He found and here I am talking to you beautiful people. So you don't need to at all struggle, I want to say. You don't need to at all struggle and fight and compete because if something is to be yours, it will find you. When you rise, raise your state, which is in that equation state, you see there, I'm going to explain this equation in a moment. If you're going to be vibrating high, right, from those love feelings, uh, gratitude, joy, beauty, every single day, every morning, every afternoon, every evening, more and more and more and more, so until it becomes what it actually truly is, your true nature. When you do that, things actually come to you because, you know, Everything that is beautiful, that is everything that is wonderful, the, all the abundance, it's yours. It is your divine right. That's what I saw. That's what I experienced in my visions. And I actually live it every single day, even if I'm in a hospital with my husband. That's all good. That's a part of my heaven. That is a part of my heaven that has a message for me that I need to, or in this case, my husband, look at something a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, like I did with my eating disorder by the way, I actually got, uh, what is it, 20, 
20, I don't know, 25 years ago, something like that. I got a diagnosis that I had cancer in my throat, uh, lymphoma. I have this beautiful paper from doctors and what? And nothing. I'm here, right? Did not do any treatment, nothing. It was diagnosed and I took it when I got this diagnosis. I looked at it and I said, no, I don't agree with that. And we had fights with doctors because at that time, by the way, mind you, right? I was not yet this awakened human. Yet I felt, as I told you, I had those senses, right? I had those sensations ever since I was young that I feel something, there's more to it. There's more to life. And I felt I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to have this. I'm not going to have this. So I chose, I'm not having this. Cancer, no, I'm not having this. And I chose, I did research. I chose to believe that we all have cancer cells. All of us have cancer cells all the time. It's, it's a normal biological process. Only if we choose to focus all our thoughts, our emotions, and then we'll start vibrating with this fearful state. If we're going to freak out, cancer will respond and it will start to mutate and it will start to spread. But if you choose the opposite, if you say, okay, this cancer is for me. Oh, it's a present. It's a gift. It is telling me something and knowing when it was here in my throat, there was a lump, right? There was a tumor. What is a throat? It's your communication center. I was going through some difficult time. I was not speaking my voice. I was not standing in my power. So this situation, or rather me, because I created this for myself, mind you, we are making a plan before we come here and we creating all sorts of scenarios that we can live. So I created this for myself to experience this as Natalia, to have this because I was not speaking my voice. If I had sp spoken my voice long enough, hard enough, not hard enough, you know, bravely enough rather, maybe I would not have to have this scenario, but I haven't. So therefore I've manifested this little thing to remind myself, oh shoot, I've got to love myself. I've got to speak my truth. I've got to be authentic. I've got to unapologetically live what is my what my heart is telling me right so when i got this diagnosis i basically said to a doctor yeah cool you can have your opinion but no <laughs> and then we consulted other uh, people bioenergotherapists people who work with energy and they said to me what i just said to you that cancer is merely a mutation and they could not sense any mutations whatever it was it was just localized so we have opted to remove this tumor and i said i don't want to do any chemo i don't want to do any radiotherapy no uh -uh, no 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 that is not for me that is not empowering my body that is not good for my immune system if i have something that i need to be getting healthier and stronger maybe i need to change my nutrition maybe i need to change the way i think maybe i need to change the way i speak all those things and so you know when they removed this lamb they started to test it and i was doing my work on my thoughts and my feelings changing everything and by the time the diagnosis came back they dice they this is, you know, they cut it, they send it to the lab, they check, they check, they search. They didn't find any cancer. And then they said, oh, 35 years ago, we made a mistake like that. And then now I have a question for you. Was it a mistake? Or was it that by my alignment, energetic alignment, I have changed the outcome? And once again, Richard, I'm going to ask you to show that algorithm of co-creation because I'm getting to it now. When we look at my example, there was a thought, right? I received the thought. So this is this little nice equation that you can every single day, you can use it every single day. You can use it to empower yourself and choose the way you're going to go every single day. Heaven on earth, hell on earth. And that's the end of this result, your life. You want heaven on earth or do you want hell? If you want heaven on earth, that is your authentic life. That is your that is the music of your heart, right? And hell on earth is doing everything but what your heart is guiding you to do, right? I believe we're all in agreement with that. I mean, that's my definition of heaven on earth. Heaven on earth for me is living me, living me, okay? Living the truest me, not the ego maniac, the heart based lovetarian beautiful Natalia who actually uses her ego and she surrenders her ego for the benefit of all.
okay? Because I actually believe that every single person is a powerful co-creator and co-creatrix of the reality. And if we choose to align our ego with our heart, our mind with our heart, and we allow our heart to guide this beautiful mind of ours, this fabulous ego that was actually given to us to help us, okay? To help us achieve things in life. But it got, you know, cuckoo basically in the process. Again, never mind how that happened. If we align, my God, it is so fabulous. You know, all of you, you know how powerful mind can be. You get ideas, you get downloads. It's like an antenna, right? You get all those beautiful ideas and then get on with it and you go and create your life. But always remember that your heart has to be the guide of the mind, not the other way around. Actually, science shows us today that mind Mind's electromagnetic field, because everything, as we said, is electromagnetic frequency vibrating as its uh, electromagnetic energy vibrating at its frequency. Heart, heart's electromagnetic field is 5,000 times stronger than the brain's. Can you believe it? The magnetism is 5,000 times stronger and electric field is 100 times stronger than the brain. Can you believe it? So why would we, why would we? want to allow our mind to guide if it's just merely a tool for the heart to show the way you know and the heart as i said is the anchor is the seat of our higher self so now look at this um equation and late, make notes later if you want so you wake up in the morning and boom what hits you boom programming from yesterday and maybe 20 years that you've been mulling over right or maybe you are still replaying some stuff from the previous life doesn't matter. You know where your power is? Now. In this now moment. In fact, in this quantum field of electromagnetic field, there is no past. There is no, there is no future. There is just this now moment. And tomorrow is another now moment. So to get present, you wake up in the morning, get present. You start breathing. And the thoughts are coming, right? Like, oh my God, what a shitty day. I've got to have another day, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, you go and you go and you go. So what you need to do, you need to take a pen and paper, take your journal and you start writing your thoughts down. And then you will look at this algorithm. You write thought plus emotion equals feeling. That leads to a state. State makes me do stuff, right? Go into action. And then the more actions I take, the more results I have, which you call life, right? So then you reverse it. You take it back. You are conscious co-creator now. You're no longer a puppet. You're no longer a, you know, a victim of life. No, you're powerful co-creator, co-creator, co-creatrix. So you wake up in the morning and you start making notes, of your thoughts while you're breathing and you be honest with yourself. If you feel uh, what is called negative emotions, be honest, write those thoughts down. And then you ask yourself, does this make me happy? Does this make me suffer or what? Is this the life that I want to experience? Do I want to get out of bed and have a shitty existence or do I want to be happy and joyful? Because if you do, baby, then you need to take a little bit of, shall we say, control. It's very difficult to control 60,000 thoughts. I know that we have every day, but you can become conscious, okay? There's a difference between being unconscious, little monkey that runs around and allows her or his thoughts run them, or you can say, no, 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 okay, I don't like this. I don't prefer this. I don't want to live like that. No, I'm going to think a different thought now. And it's, again scientifically proven when you start thinking one positive thought since everything is energy you start thinking another positive thought and another positive thought and another positive thought all of them will empower one another and then and you start creating energetic momentum. It's like going on this wheel, you know, when kids are going on this wheel. And the energy will start spinning faster, 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 faster. And what will happen? You will go higher, higher, higher. And what will happen with that thought, that thought will be empowered by your desire to be the libertarian, right? You say, no, I want to live with love in my heart. I want my heart to guide me. I don't want to live like a rat being based on fear of vengeance and all this negativity. Not judging this. It is just energy, okay? It is what it is. I just don't want to live in hell anymore. So you say no. I say no. I have conscious choice. I have a free will and I'm going to change. 
And so you start writing this down and you start writing other thoughts, positive thoughts, and you observe. You observe how you feel when you are co-creating your life from hell as opposed to heavenly thoughts, right? And then you start observing how your body, what state you are in state vibrational state you know how you feel when you joyful you know how you feel when you're grateful you feel amazing right you feel like you want to move mountains you feel like you want to spread your wings and the opposite is true when you're depressed when you're down you go like right slouching posture down you can hardly breathe nobody wants that nobody wants that you may pretend you want it but you don't want it yeah, positive mindset. That's right. Uh, you know, Joanne. So basically you choose that. So you look at this, um, you look at this uh, equation and you do this exercise every single day, every single morning, and then you repeat it over and over again, choosing to climb up so that you can hear your higher self you climb up your higher self is as uh, descending you are sending it's descending and you're starting to create in communion and you will feel and i will continue on the next episode that you will feel like somebody is taking the wheel of course it may take a week it may take a month it may take 15 years because it will depend at which point you are saying to yourself yeah this is the truth this is my true nature love is in fact and life is in fact who i am i am this energy being that is powerful and natalia what she's saying there's something to it so i'm going to believe that because i'm going to choose to see she's saying to me that there is a rabbit there so i'm going to see the rabbit i'm not going to see the bird right you know what i'm saying you feeling me so it's a choice it's a choice and you need to keep making that choice every single day even though i've been on this conscious journey in this lifetime for 13 years <laughs> shoot i still need to make that choice it's it's more and more my nature now it's more and more my nature however when i'm tested now when i test myself because by the way people nobody's testing you you're testing yourself i mean you are this incredible being that created this life for you so you can evolve and have this beautiful heaven on earth you know why i mean why did you come here what do you think you came here for to have an awesome life that's the only reason that's the only reason to learn to grow evolve and everything that is not that it's just your mind telling you some nonsense story that you need to suffer that you need to hold grudges that you need to compete that you need to be mad and upset and mull over the crap that happened to you 25 years ago no you don't need to do that you can just let go and if you're not gonna let go you're gonna do what i did you're gonna manifest something in your throat or in your butt whatever it will happen so that you can snap out of it and you can say, I choose to co-create my heaven on earth. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Whoa. I think I better stop because Richard is going to cut me off. Otherwise, I don't know, Richard, should I just stop now? <laughs> I love you guys and girls. Thank you so much. And I apologize. I was not interacting with you as nearly as much as I would love to next time i'm going to get better with this but when natalia is in the flow it just flows so get ready for a tsunami of love here right so next time in two weeks we're going to pick up from from this algorithm of co-creation and we're going to go back and forth we're going to do more stories and eventually you know my desire for the show is that we're going to have some more interactions maybe even like i'll pick a person and we're going to play with a person we're going to focus on some specific problems i mean i have been doing this for thousands of years mentoring and counseling and in this lifetime what 13 years now so you know play with me this is to empower you to inspire you to have fun so meet me in two weeks and we're going to pick up from there and i love you have a fabulous they wake up tomorrow do the algorithm of co-creation and experience you have on earth kisses thank you so much have a good night tomorrow morning from 11 a.m brie wilson continues with her show influencing your life brie offers her own guidance and advice while supporting you with everyday situations past life readings and future support Tomorrow night from 8pm we have an evening of free mediumship readings with Bill Hughes and his guest. Our regular fortnightly show, Collective Consciousness, offers our viewers an opportunity to receive messages from their loved ones.
Spiritual Psychics TV is hosting the first annual recognition of achievements, acknowledging those who dedicate their lives to a spiritual act of kindness. Spiritual Psychics TV, bringing spiritual people together. Spiritual Psychics TV presents an holistic fair on Saturday the 11th of June. Offering the best in spiritual readers and market stalls. Join us from 10 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. Throughout the day there will be many stools such as natural polished crystals and stones. Qualified complementary therapists offering spiritual healing. This exciting day is being held at the Waterlooville Community Center, with plenty of free parking. A wide range of handmade products including candles, oils, jewelry, naturally organic and vegan soaps, creams, and bath bombs. Not forgetting the kids, we have face painting and a bouncy castle to enjoy all day. For those who are interested in potions, spells, and essentials oils, then we have a stall for you here as well. Maybe you're looking for a reading, be it mediumistic, palm, or tarot, 11 readers are available throughout the day. Refreshments such as drinks and light snacks are being provided by the 1940s Tea Room from Havent. Plenty of free workshops, talks, and a demonstration of mediumship are also planned during the day. For more information, please visit mbs.spiritualpsychicstv.online.